asked for Joshua by Jericho, he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. Joshua went to him and said unto him, Are you for us or against us? So far, the scripture. I want to speak to you from this text, from this subject. Whose side are you on? Ask somebody. Say, I want to ask you a question. Whose side are you on? Ask him again. Say, hey, you. I want to ask you a question. Are you listening? Whose side are you on? song, whose side are you leaning on? I'm leaning on the Lord's side. Whose side are you leaning on? And that was the jam. I don't know about y'all with that. They, they, they popped up with that one. It was, it was on and popping. I don't care if it was hot, cold. You start, and we just start leaning, leaning on the Lord's side. Whose side? Because you had to choose a side. And I think this current church, this current church, this current church, I, was, I got saved and I, got, I, I gave it all over to the Lord in 92. 92. So I was 19, 20, gave it over to the Lord. And they kept a strong hand on us. I mean, they kept a strong hand on us. We had church every Sunday morning, every Sunday afternoon. We had prayer on Tuesday nights for an hour. We had service on Wednesday nights. We had service on Friday nights. We had choir rehearsal, clean the church, feed the homeless, give out tracts on Saturday. And you had better been in Sunday school the next Sunday morning. You could not be a preacher and you ain't come to Sunday school, Christian there, whatever you want to call it. You had to be. If the bishop came to Sunday school, God knows the minister had better be in Sunday school. It kept a hold on us and it kept us out of trouble, y'all. It kept us out of a lot of mess. And it's hard to be in somebody else's bed when you're in prayer. It's, true. it's hard to be at the club when you got Friday night service. It's, it's hard to be doing some, some stupid stuff when you got midday, midweek service. So they, they, they had all these services because they wanted to keep a hold on you because they understood that an idle mind is the devil's playground. So they had to make sure your mind was always on the Lord and that truth that was picking a sign. Yes. You could not be in the middle. You, you, you just could not be in the middle. There's no such thing as the middle. It is a a, 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 a a travesty to say, I'm not taking a side. Wow. It is out of order for you to say, I'm not taking a side. It is not even biblical for you to say, I'm not taking a side. Because even God says, I want you hot or I want you cold. God doesn't even care if you choose to be cold. Just choose a side. He said, if you are in the middle, you make me sick. You make me want to throw up. You, you, you make me uh, you, 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 you upset my stomach. How can you upset the stomach of God? Jesus. Personification. Does God have a stomach? Does God have a stomach? But he says, you make me throw up when I look at you. And you take him no side. You are in the middle. And this church that we have now, the people that are getting saved now, we, we are preaching and we are having church and, and, and we are preaching uh, until you get excited. Right. 
not till you repent. And if we only preach till you get excited, we did not do our job. Our job is to preach until you repent. Who cares if you get excited? We didn't shout today. Did you change? I didn't dance today. Did God loose you? We didn't sweat at all in church today. Were your chains broken? Were your dungeons shook? What has happened to you from the moment you came in here to you left? Has there been a change in your life? Or is this just a modern day circus looking like a church? The greatest show on earth happens on Sunday between 11 and 1. It does not happen during the Easter season when the Ringling Brothers will, will come to the garden, the greatest show on earth unfortunately happens every Sunday across the nation when preachers have to get, get up and excite you and run around and make you jump up and do cartwheels and you leave here still in a bunch of hell. That is a travesty that we don't call you to repentance. And repentance is not when you cry. That's not when you cry. Oh, that's not repentance. Repentance is not because you rolled on the floor. Repentance is not just because you came to the altar. All of that is included, but it's not repentance. It's part of the process. Repentance is when you change. That is true repentance. I've changed my mind. I've changed my outlook. I've, I've changed the way I think. I, I, I've changed my, my ideas, my ideology. I, I've changed the, the, my course of thinking. I was born in sin and shape and iniquity, but I repent of my sins and I'm trying to walk differently every single day. If that is your testimony, give God a prayer. I come to repent. I've come to repent. I've, I've come to, to change my outlook right. on life. Yes, Lord. My wife brought up something absolutely amazing. She, she was, we were talking, and she, she brought up the concept of, of homophobia. And she said, and I agree, and we start, I start thinking about it. It is an insult to call me homophobic. It's an insult. What do you mean it's an insult? When you have a phobia, you're scared of something. Oh, wow, yes. You're, you're, there's many phobias. Arachnophobia, I'm scared of spiders. I have arachnophobia, I'm scared of them. You have a, a fear, you have a real fear of something. So to call me homophobic means I'm scared of homosexuals. Because I don't agree with you, you think I'm scared of you? I'm not scared of you. I'm telling you what the Bible says. How do you call me homophobic? Because I agree with God. Who said I'm scared of you? I've eaten with homosexuals. I've went to work with homosexuals. I shake their hands. But they ain't saying like everybody else. I'm not scared of you. I just don't agree with you. That's good, first lady. I'm a phobic. The devil is a liar. I don't agree with sin. I don't agree with your sin, and I don't agree with my sin. Because any man says he has no sin, he is a liar. I'm just, I just offended some of y'all. I ain't I got sin. I was born in it. I was shaped in it, and I'm trying every day to get loose from it. So I, I don't have the Privilege, if that's what you want to call it, of being neutral. Amen. I was, I was thinking about this text all week, and it, 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 it came to my, my spirit because of this whole net neutrality. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been watching the news. Uh, you've been watching about this whole issue of net neutrality, and it's a big issue. 
so much that Congress has gotten in on it. The president has gotten in on it. People are protesting net neutrality. And it's a, it's a big issue at the forefront of our country. It's a big issue at the forefront of our, the entire world. That net neutrality is about to be extinguished. What is net? Like, what are we talking about? Net neutrality? Uh, uh, um, you, 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 let me just explain. You, you, I'm sure you know about it, but it is, it is, it is. You know, it was President Obama who set a law that said all internet providers, all internet providers, have to treat all content on the internet the same. No matter who your provider is, they could not charge you more based off of the content that they're streaming. Right, right. Because there are some providers who will slow down your Netflix yes. Yes. and charge you more for higher speed. They will slow down your Hulu. They will, they will slow down your streaming services. So when you call, they say, well, we have a, a better service at $29.99. They, they charge you more based off of the content that you want to watch. But what Obama said was there has to be net neutrality. No matter what you are streaming, you have to have one price. Everybody must charge the same price for the same content. And what they are doing now is that we want to get rid of net neutrality and let service providers charge whatever they want. Oh my God. And let the consumer decide where he want to go. So it's an issue with this whole net neutrality. And I understand that. I understand that concept. And it, it kind of makes sense and it's all good and fair when you're talking about content streaming across the internet and you're saving money and your stuff is not buffering and stuff is coming through at an even uh, plane and, and you get to watch your videos and, and it doesn't stop and, and they're not charging you more and they price gouging you uh, but when it comes to relationships when it comes to people and when it especially comes to God right. there is no neutrality nope. in the Bible Thank you, God. Amen. there is no biblical neutrality Amen. you have to pick a side you have to pick a side you cannot walk on both you cannot walk on both sides. You, 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 you have to pick a side. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to be transparent with you this morning and tell you, I don't like people. <laughs> I'm just transparent. I just, I just don't like people. What do you mean by that? I'll finish my sentence. Come on. I don't like people that hang with people that don't like me. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Amen. Don't work that way. Absolutely. I got a problem with people that hang with people that don't like me. Especially if you and I have a covenant and you know they can't stand me. I got a problem with turning on my Facebook and seeing you sitting at their party. Right. I had a problem watching you taking selfies with my enemy. Right. When you just ate at my house last night, now you at their house uh, uh, two days from now, I have a problem with that. Maybe y'all can deal with that and say, well, no, 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 no. There is a thing called loyalty. loyalty. There is a thing, that it, it's a real thing that's called loyalty yeah. and I believe that if I cut covenant with you Amen. and you know they are trying to kill me on the other side how are you having dinner with my enemy Say it. I got a problem I got a problem with that 
hmm, maybe some of y'all ain't a problem with that. And I, I can't get with these people who say, you know what, that's between them. I'm going to stay out of it. You can't stay out of it. The minute you became my friend, my friends are your friends, and my enemies are your enemies. How don't you get fat? Maybe it's a stereotype. And I'm sure it's a stereotype. It's, it's a stereotype, Tarnisha. It's a stereotype. But, but they, they told me, if you made friends with a Puerto Rican, They said, you got a friend for life. No, you do, though. This is serious. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Miss. Thank you, Puerto Rican. <laughs> they said, if you make friends with a Puerto Rican and an Italian, you have a friend for life. Yeah, they are. Lord, I had a friend in sixth grade. His, his name was uh, Alberto. And, and any time I had a problem, Alberto said, we got a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime I had an issue with somebody, Alberto always wanted to jump in. And I said, this don't make no sense. He said, I got your back. He was a friend to the end. Yeah. He was on my side. He helped me. If I had a problem with something, Alberto came in and helped me. But I'm trying to tell you, you got to find some loyal people. Yeah. All these wishy-washy people, oh with you one day, the next day you can't find them. They say they're your friend, but you are, well, you hang out with my enemy. You're conversing with my enemy. You're at their party. You're at their house, eating their food. Sleeping in their pants, yet you tell me you, you are not my, I need loyal people on my side. It's hard to find loyalty. 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 You need loyalty. I, I need loyalty. I'm tired of people telling me what somebody said about me. me what they said about me and you won't tell me what you said to defend me. Child and they said this and they said that and they and I'm sitting there waiting to hear how you jumped in and defended my reputation. You jumped in and said no not me Hennis. You jumped in even if I was guilty. You jumped in and said hold up you gonna stop right here cause now you're talking about my friend. Yeah. <laughs> All this? Absolutely not. There are some people in my life that you cannot talk about. I'm trying to tell you, I am a lot of things. I am a lot of things. But one of them that I really, I am loyal. If you're loyal to me, I'm loyal to you. If you are a pink, I'll hide you in my basement. I'm trying to tell you, I'll go down for you. Rob something. Getaway car. I am a loyal person. Yeah. <laughs> we gonna split that money. <laughs> what has happened to loyal people? I'm trying to tell you about people who who will go the extra mile. The extra mile. I'm not perfect, but I'm loyal. There are some people you cannot talk about to me. There are some people you cannot talk about to me. I cannot stand and allow you to talk about people who I have cut covenant with. I cannot allow you. Ain't nobody on this earth can stand here and talk about Bishop Watcher to me. I know the man ain't perfect. I know he got his fault, but God has given him as a father. I dare you to talk about my natural father. Don't talk about my mama. Don't talk about my brother. I know my brother ain't all that, but he's my brother. I dare you to talk about Tisha. We will go down in a fight because I'm loyal. Yes. Loyal. Loyal. I'm trying to talk about uh, just because we have a problem uh, doesn't mean we separate. That's good. 
a lawyer. Now folks have an argument. They don't talk for three months. Folks have a disagreement. They won't talk for six years. Real relationships are built through issues. Yes. Real, real, real relationships are built through issues. Dr. Kwan and I was talking about, was talking about Kasha the other week and talking about how happy she was and how Moody got married and we were talking about them and I said, hold up, I wonder if they had a good fight yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All that smiling, everybody can smile. I want to know if Delroy told her off yet. I want to know. He's seen the real Kashi yet. Because after that good fight, it's when they're really married. It's not when he put the ring on. It ain't when they kissed. It ain't when they signed that paper. It's after they had that argument. It's that, baby, I love you. Baby, I forgive you. Let's get past this. It ain't all about that. Take back your bags and get out of my house. Jesus. Real loyalty. Real loyalty. So you know what? We ain't getting along right now. But you get on the bottom of the bed. I'll get on the top of the bed. Real loyalty says, I don't like you right now. But how you want your chicken cooked? Real loyalty says, you get on my nerves. How many sugars you want in your tea? Real loyalty says, overseer get on my nerves. But I'm going to do whatever he says. Real loyalty is the law, you people. We can build anything with loyal members. We can do anything with loyal members. I don't need a lot of members. I need loyal members. What do I need with 200 folks who ain't even loyal? I could take 20 loyal people and turn the city upside down. I need loyal people on my side. I need loyal people in my my vicinity. I need loyal people in my ear. Don't come to me if you ain't loyal. Loyal. Ask your neighbor, are you loyal? Who are you loyal to? Who are you loyal to? Who is your cut buddy? Who is your rider tie? Who I shotgun with you? Who get on your nerve and you still call them? You gotta be loyal. I ain't perfect, but I'm loyal. Yes. I ain't perfect, but God knows I try to be loyal. I know folks who are in all kinds of mess, but you ain't gonna hear it out of my mouth. I know some dirt on some people, but you won't hear it out of my mouth. Cause truth be told, they got some dirt on me too. And truth be told, if I look back, everybody in here got some dirt on you. You just hope it and don't come out. Right. Everybody's scared now. Everybody's scared now. They done got Charlie Rose. They done got Madden Howard. They done got House of Cards. They done got this one and that one. Folks home right now calling folks. You know I was only playing 20 years ago. Right? I was only playing 30 years. Everybody's coming out and telling. Everybody's dropping down now. He touched me 30 years ago. What are you talking about 30 years ago? He said this 30 years ago. And some of you need to be nervous. Touch 30 years ago. Uh, who you kissed 30 years ago? Uh, whose breast you squeezed 30 years ago? Uh, while they wasn't looking, uh, stuff is coming out right. But you better thank God. Uh, although I wasn't perfect, uh, the blood is covering me. Uh, although I made a mistake, uh, the blood is covering me. Uh, I sent that naked picture to my phone, uh, but the blood is covering me. Uh, Cheated years ago, but the blood is covering me. I stole years ago, but the blood is covering me. Does anybody got a past that you don't want to catch up to your present? You better thank God that the blood is covering you. You better thank God your name is Charlie Rose. You better thank God your name is Kevin Spacey. You better thank God your name is Weinstein. I'm trying to tell 
for you. I'd rather be McKinnis than Weinstein right now. said a long time ago, uh, them chicks ain't for you. <laughs> what the world is missing, y'all, is loyal people. What does it mean to be loyal, to be audited, to be constant, to be dutiful, to be firm, to be resolute, to be steadfast, steady, tried and true, unfailing, unswerving, unwavering. Those are kind of adjectives I want people to say about me. At my funeral, 60 years from now, I need you to say he was unwavering, he was unswerving, he was ardent, he was steadfast, unmovable, firm. He knew how to keep a secret. He was a lawyer. Loyalty, loyalty. I think the one, the one that, that really broke it down the most, uh, that impressed me the most, uh, is George Bush. Yeah. I made all the Democrats mad. George Bush was the one that impressed me. I wasn't too much a George Bush fan, because you know, it really was Dick Cheney that was president, but George just stood out there and said what they told him to say. Yeah. But, 9-11, after 9-11, George Bush got on TV. He said something that blew my mind. George said, every nation. He, he, he didn't talk about their allies. He said, every nation on this earth. George just laid it out there. He says, every nation and every region now has a decision to make. Uh, yeah. Come on. Yeah. George, oh, Georgie, Georgie, putting pie. <laughs> they kissed the girls and George said, every nation and every region now has a decision to make. What's the decision, George? George says, either you are with us or you against us. That's it. That's it. George, George said, we done got attacked. They done bought plane and knocked the building down. We know he's an inside job. And then we got planes hit the Pentagon. He said, every nation, I'm putting you on blast now. I'm telling you now, you are either with us or you are against us. You cannot stand in the middle and say we ain't gonna do with this. In between you and Saddam, in between you and the terrorists, George says absolutely not. From this point on, you are either with the U.S. or you are against the U.S. And you gotta have that in your spirit. When you talk to folks, you gotta tell them you are either with me or you are against me. You are either with my God or against my God. I'm trying to tell you, you can't be neutral. You're too neutral. You're too neutral. You're too neutral. And this whole text deals y'all with being neutral. Doesn't seem like it, but it does. Deals with being neutral. Israel is now being led by Joshua. Mm -hmm. Moses has died. The diplomat has died. Moses walked for years to get the people to the promised land. But Pastor Moses' problem was he let the People change his disposition. Wow. And, and you can't allow people to change who you are. He 
He's leading a bunch of hard-headed people. He's leading stubborn people. He led them out of slavery, and they still had an attitude. Have you ever took somebody out of some mess, and they got mad at you? You done told him to leave that nigga because he wasn't no good for you. And they left him and two weeks later they mad at you because they ain't got no man. He was beating on you. I don't know why I listen to you. Now Tony, now now Michael was somebody else. He was already with them. He was already with them. Now you had an attitude. And and they got mad with Moses. And Moses began to act out of character. Yeah. Act out of character. And Moses leads them to the land. But couldn't go in. Couldn't go in. Moses, God, God was so gracious. That, that God, I don't know. I don't know if it was I don't know if it's good or bad that God allowed him to see it. Right. But you can't go in it. Is it, is it good that you let me even see it? And I can't go in it. I don't know about you, but I part of it. So you know what? I don't even want to see it. Huh? Just don't, don't, even, don't let me see it. God said, I'm going to let you see it. But you can't go inside. He dies and, and Joshua takes over. And Joshua is not like Moses. Joshua is different. They call this the Joshua generation. This ain't no Joshua generation. This is a whack generation. This is some floozy generation. The Joshua generation were fighters. We're not fighters. We don't come to pray. We don't come to serve. We are, we are. This ain't no Joshua generation. Joshua was a warrior. That's right. Joshua's people told him, they said, check this out, Josh. We see what happened to Moses. They said, anybody come up against you, we're killing them. Killing them. We need folks like that. I said, you know what? Anybody come up against this ministry, we killing them. Anybody talk about my leader, I'm exposing them. Anybody say some sideways, I'm taking you in the office. Because we ain't got time for you to stop the camp. We trying to go somewhere, and you bring the Holy Spirit in here. If you say it, I'm telling. Where my snitches at? I need a church. I need a church full of stitches. I need a church. But people say, absolutely not. I'm saving the text. I'm screenshotting. I'm telling everybody. I'm exposing you because of your stuff. You're going to stop the camp. Because any time they talk about Moses, God stopped them right there. Yeah. An 11 day journey yeah. took 40 years. And the devil is a liar. I'm not going to get my inheritance. I'm not going to get what God got for me. When I'm 85, I'm going to get it in my 40s. We're not going to wait 40 years to get what God has for us. I'm trying to get it in 11 days. Tell somebody in 11 days. I'm trying to get my stuff in 11 days. I'm trying to get my healing in 11 days. I'm trying to get what God has for me. Don't stop the camp. Joshua takes over. He is. He is. They are about to go into Jericho. First stop into Canaan. God says, I want you to go into Jericho. The first stop into Canaan. The first stop into the promised land. The first stop. They are entering into their promise. 
promise. But God does something crazy. God says, before you go in, circumcise all the people. God says, take all, all those men, all of them, 13 to 80. He says, all of them. He says, make some knives out of stones. Oh Call them into the, the tent and cut their foreskin. <laughs> make a grown man just want to squint. <laughs> The reason why they do it when they eight days, they don't remember it. But when you do it when I'm 35, that is something absolutely different. He says, stop the camp and cut all the foreskins. Uh, mm. He says, I want you to cut the foreskins. This is the second circumcision. The second one, because evidently there was a first one. But the problem is that God had to make sure every man that left Egypt that was an adult died. Right. God made sure y'all gonna walk until all of them die. And I'm gonna wait till the children rise up. I'm gonna wait till, and now the children haven't been circumcised. Right. But now it's your time. And God says, before you touch the promise, I have to have your private. Yes, <laughs> what God is after is your private parts. Come on, that's good. He's after your private parts. God is not interested in your public worship. He's not interested in your public dance, your public cry, your public singing, your public service. What God is after is your private parts. He is interested in that private thing, your private thoughts, your private doubts, your private fears, your private issues, your private insecurities. Everybody has a private thing that nobody else knows about. I see you dancing, but on the other side of your dance, there is some privacy. I see you shouting, on the other side of your shout, there's a private thing you don't want nobody to know about. There is a private issue that you haven't told anybody about. And God says, before you get the promise, I need your private get the promise when I get the privates. You get the promise when I get the privates. And the problem is that you don't want to give God your privates, but you expect the promise. How, how could you fake it with God when God says, I see what you're worried about and you won't even bring it to the altar. I see what got you and you won't even bring it to the altar. I know what you're dealing with. I what your struggles are and yet you still won't give it to me and I can't give you the promise because you still got that private thing that you have not dealt with all of this we gonna dance over it go ahead and keep dancing over it I'm depressed and I'm gonna give God a shout after you shout you better make an appointment and have a conversation because depressed people shout too. Yes, they do. Right. Depressed people are shouting and they won't have a conversation. Sick people are shouting and won't even go to the doctor. What is that I feel? Oh, is that a lump? I'm going to just give God a praise until the lump goes away. You got to handle that. He says, I want you. I want you. I want you. To cut their privates. Cut the privates. Cut the privates. Look at verse 8. It says, And when the circumcision of the whole nation was finished, they remained in their places until the camp 